in this video we will prepare the vertical income statement and vertical balance sheet of Messrs. Suman Limited. So let us try to understand this problem. The following balances appear in the books of Messrs. Suman Limited for the year ended 31st March 2018. You are required to prepare revenue statement which is nothing but vertical income statement and balance sheet in vertical form. Now if you see this table, this is not a profit and loss account nor the balance sheet. How do we came to know? Because there is no tally amount over here or no profit given. Then what is this? This is just a trial balance. So with the help of this information, we will have to prepare vertical income statement and vertical balance sheet. Okay, so let's start. First, we have equity share capital. So equity share capital will come under share capital. So we will write SC, share capital. Plant and machinery, this will be your tangible fixed asset. So we will say TF. Purchases will go under COGS, cost of goods sold. Wages again will go under COGS. So we will write here COGS. Bank overdraft. This will go under non quick liability. Office rent will go under office and administrative expense. Advertisement selling and distribution expense. Finance expense non operating expense NOE. Income tax minus from profit before tax. Preliminary expenses not yet written off. This we will have to subtract from shareholders fund. Bills payable quick liability. Net profit brought down from previous year. This is your last year's profit, which you will have to add to current year's profit. So we will say add to profit after tax. Open stock COGS. Sales commission. This is your expense related to sales. So this will go under selling and distribution expense. Sales is the first item which you will have to take in uh, income statement. Debenture will go under loan fund or else you can say borrowed fund. Interim dividend paid. This is an appropriation item. So we will say APPR appropriation. Depreciation as nothing is given whether this depreciation is related to machinery or related to de uh, delivery van or related to office furniture. We will have to assume that this is related to office and admin. Hence, we will take under the head office and administrative expense. So we will write A. Office salaries will go under office and admin. Dividend received is an income. This is not your operating income. Hence, it will go under non-operating income. NOI. Goodwill is your intangible fixed asset. So we will say I F A. That indicates intangible fixed asset. Land and building is your tangible fixed asset. So we will say T F A. We will write T F A over here. Creditors 
will go under quick liability. Trade investment is an investment. Right. Then next is return to suppliers. Uh, this is your purchase return which you will have to subtract it from purchase. Okay. So we will have to take purchase. Let us take purchase. There is an adjustment on it. And what is the adjustment? You will have to subtract purchase return. Datas will go under quick asset. Cash. Quick asset. Carriage outward. This is the expense related to sales. So that will go under selling and distribution expense. Now there is an adjustment. Closing stock as on 31st March 2018 is rupees 80,000. So as we all know, we will have to give two effects of the adjustment. Hence, we will give two effect of this closing stock. First effect of closing stock will be subtracted in COGS. And second effect, non-quick asset. Fine. Let's start the solution. So if you see the solution, the first thing that you will have to do is write in the books of Mrs. Suman Limited, vertical income statement for the year ended 31st March 2018. Prepare four column, particular column, amount column, amount column, amount column, three amount column. First, we will take sales. So sales, if you see, it is given in the question. This one, 8,55,000. So we will record 8,55,000 here. Sales, 8,55,000. From this, we will subtract cost of goods sold. So in that the first one, if you see how many COGS we have, we have 1, 2, 3, and 4, 4 COGS. So first one that we will take is opening stock. So opening stock is 75,000. So you will record here opening stock 75,000. Then next, we will take purchase, 6,55,000. So purchase, so now you can see, purchase 6,55,000 we have recorded and we have subtracted this 5,000. Purchase written from the purchase. So 6,55,000 minus 5,000 will give you 6,50,000. Next, COGS is wages 85,000 so we will record sorry before that closing stock we will have to subtract closing stock which is 80,000 so once you calculate this 75,000 plus 6,50,000 minus 80,000 you will get 6,45,000 to this we will add wages 85,000. So wages 85,000 is added to this 6,45,000. So once you add 85,000 to 6,45,000, you will get 7,30,000. Now what is this 7,30,000? This is the cost of goods sold of Mrs. Suman Limited. Now this cost of goods sold will be subtracted from net sales. So once you subtract cost of goods sold from net sales, you will get gross profit, 1,25,000. From this gross profit, we will have to subtract operating expenses. There are two operating expenses. First is the administrative expense. Second is selling and distribution expense. So let us go back and find A. How many A we have? We have one. Here. Then we have two, three, three A. In that the first one is office rent so 5000 so let us go to the solution and record office rent 5000 the next a we have is depreciation 
So let us go and record depreciation 15,000. Next A is office salaries 15,000. So again, we'll go to the solution and we will write office salaries 15,000. So all the three A's, that is administrative expenses we have recorded. Now take the total of this, you will get 35,000. So what is 35,000? 35,000 is the total of administrative expense. Same way we will have to take the total of selling and distribution expense. So let us go and check how many S we have. We have one here, then two, then three. So we have three S that is selling and distribution expenses. And then the first one is advertisement. Advertisement 10,000. So let us go and record advertisement 10,000. The next S we have is uh, sales commission 6,000. So let us go and record sales commission 6,000. Next S that we have is uh, carriage outward 4,000. So we will record carriage outward 4,000. So we have recorded all the three selling and distribution expenses. Take the total of all three, you will get 20,000. Now what is this 20,000? This is your total of selling and distribution expense. So now we have 35,000 as administrative expenses and 20,000 as selling and distribution expenses. So if we take the total of administrative and selling and distribution expenses, you will get operating expenses, which is 55,000. Now this operating expenses will be subtracted from gross profit. So once you subtract this operating expense from gross profit, you will get operating profit. So in our case, Operating profit is 70,000, right? Now, from this operating expense, you will have to add, sorry, to this operating expense, you will have to add non-operating income. Let us go and find out in the question, how many NOI we have? This is NQL, NOE, NOI. We got one NOI, dividend received. That's it. So we have only one non operating income that is dividend received 5000. So let us go and record dividend received 5000. Fine. Then next we will have to subtract non operating expense. Let us go and check how many NOE we have. One, we got one NOE over here. That's it. So we have finance expense 8000. So let us go and record finance expense under non operating expense as 8000. So 70,000 is your operating profit plus 5000 non operating income minus non operating expense 8000. You will get net profit before tax, which is 67,000. Now we will have to subtract tax. So let us go ahead and check in the problem, any information regarding tax, yes. So we got this, income tax is 15,000. So we will subtract income tax from net profit before tax, 15,000. So once you subtract tax from profit before tax, you will get net profit after tax which is 52,000. Now this is our current year's profit, 52,000. In this current year's profit, we will have to add previous year's profit. So if you go back to the question, you will find previous year profit as 13,000. So let us go to the solution and add 15, sorry, 13,000 previous year's profit to the current year profit. So previous year's profit is 52,000 plus current year's profit 13,000. The total profit which we are getting now is 65,000. So this is termed as profit available for appropriation. Now from this, we will subtract all our appropriation items. So let us go back to the question and see how many APPR we have. We got one interim dividend pay. That's it. So interim dividend pay, 15,000 will be subtracted from the profit available for appropriation and finally you will get retained earning.
Now this retained earning we will have to transfer in the balance sheet under the head reserves and surplus. So let us prepare the vertical balance sheet. So you will give the heading as vertical balance sheet as on 31st March 2018. Again 4 column, particular column and 3 amount column. Now there are two parts in the vertical balance sheet. The first part is sources of fund and second part is application of fund. So let us calculate sources of fund first. Now under sources of fund there are two headings. The first one is owner's fund and the second one is loan fund. Let us calculate owner's fund first. Now how do we calculate owner's fund? You will have to take the share capital. So if we go back to the question. You will find SC share capital. One here. And any other SC? No. So we have only one share capital that is equity share capital 2,25,000. So we will go and record two lakh fifty five thousand under share capital. To this, we will have to add reserves and surplus. So let us go back and check how many reserves and surplus do we have in the question. So we must have written R and S. Reserves and surplus. No, there are there is no reserves and surplus in the question. But wait, I hope you remember we have retained earning. We got just now we got retained earning from the vertical income statement. So this retained earning will go under the head reserves and surplus. So we have retained earning of. 50,000, we will take retained earning under the reserves and surplus. So now take the total of both, you will get 2,75,000. Now from this 2,75,000, you will have to subtract fictitious asset. Now if you go back to the question, let us find out fictitious asset. Preliminary expenses. So this preliminary expenses 5,000 will be subtracted from the shareholders fund. So preliminary expenses 5,000 will be subtracted from the shareholders fund. So once you, once you subtract 5,000 from 2,75,000, you will get shareholders fund as 2,70,000. So what is this 2,70,000? 2,70,000 is shareholders fund or you can say owner's fund. Right now, to this we will have to add loan fund. Let us go back to the question and find out loan fund LF. Yeah, so debenture, any other LF? No, so let us add debenture under loan fund. So debenture 50,000 is added under loan fund. As we have only one item, we can take this directly in the order column. So 270,000 plus 50,000 will give you 320,000. Now what is this 320,000? This is your total sources of fund. So what do you mean by this? The total fund which you have collected is 3,20,000 and how have you collected this 3,20,000? 2,70,000 from owners and 50,000 by issuing the debentures. Right? So this is how we calculate total sources of fund. Now the next thing, the next part of the second part of vertical balance sheet is application of fund. How we are applying or where we are applying this like 20,000, we will have to show under application of fund. So there are three headings under application of fund in that the first one is fixed asset, right? Then the second one is long term investment and the third heading is working capital. Let us try to calculate fixed asset first. 
and a Fick's transit, we have two different types of Fick's transit, and then the first one is intangible Fick's transit. So if we go back to the question and check intangible fixed asset IFA IFA yeah we got this one goodwill any other IFA no so let us record goodwill 25,000 under intangible fixed asset we don't have any other intangible fixed asset hence we will calculate the total of tangible fixed asset. Again, we will go back to the question and we will try to see how many EF A we have tangible fixed asset. So here we have one tangible fixed asset TFA, 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 two. So we have only two tangible fixed assets. One is this plant and machinery 45,000 and second is this land and building 48,000. So let us record both under tangible fixed assets. So we have recorded land and building 48,000 and plant and machinery 45,000. Now if you take a total of both, you will get 93,000. So what is this 93,000? This is the total of tangible fixed assets. Intangible plus tangible will give you total fixed asset. So our total fixed asset is 1,18,000. How we got this? 25,000 intangible fixed asset plus 93,000 tangible fixed asset. Now this 1,18,000 will be termed as total of fixed asset. Now let us go and check the investment part. We'll go back to the question. Let us see investment in the question where it is given. Yeah, trade investment. Trade investment 75,000. So we have only one investment. So let us record trade investment 75,000 as we have only one item. We can record this directly in the outer column. Fine. Next, third heading is working capital. How can we calculate working capital? Current asset minus current liability. Let us calculate current asset first. There are two different types of current asset. The first one is quick asset. Second one is non-quick asset. Let us calculate quick asset first. We will go back to the question again. And we will try to find out QA. QA, QA, quick asset. Yes, so here we got data 65,000 and cash 42,000. Let us record both under quick asset. So you can find cash 42,000 and data 65,000. Take the total of both. You will get 1,7,000. Now, what is this 1,7,000? This is the total of quick asset. Same way, we will have to find out non-quick asset. Let us go back to the question and check non-quick asset. NQA. 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 Oh, we have in the adjustment that is closing store. So we have only one item under non quick asset that is closing store. So you can see closing stock that is inventory we have recorded under non quick asset. Okay, now we will have to take the total of both quick asset as well as non quick asset. So if you add quick and non quick, you will get total current asset. So here we are getting total current asset as 1,87,000. Now from this current asset you will have to subtract current liability to get working capital. So let us calculate current liability. 
there are two types of current liability first quick liability second non quick liability let us calculate quick let us go and check quick liability in the question so we will find ql ql quick lab so we got bills payable here as quick liability any other quick ql Okay, so we got one item which is bills payable. So let us go and record quick liability. So bills payable, you can say 15,000. We must have forgot creditors. Yeah, we forgot this item as well. Creditors. So we will record creditors also 25,000 under quick liability. Now take the total of quick liability 25,000 plus 15,000, you will get 40,000. So what is this 40,000? 40,000 is the total of quick liability. To this, we will have to add non quick liability. So we will go back to the question and find out NQL. So we got one here, bank overdraft 20,000. Any other NQL? No. So we will record bank overdraft under non quick liability as 20,000. Sorry. So now let us add quick liability and non quick liability. 40,000 plus 20,000. We will get 60,000. What is the 60,000? 60,000 is the total of current liability. Now in this column, if you see, we have current asset as well as current liability. So current liability, we will have to subtract from current asset, then we will get working capital. So 187,000. Minus 60,000 will give you working capital.